Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well and staying safe and those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I want to do a template-based editing workflow. Templates are one of the cool innovations in Luminar AI and admittedly I have not spent very much time speaking about them in videos. I want to change that because the cool thing about templates is that they basically, because of the AI, the AI underneath the engine that drives Luminar AI can recognize the content of your image. And so the templates use that AI, recognizes elements, and makes suggestions based on what's in your image. So the idea here is to recognize what's going on in the photo and make suggestions so that you can move quickly through and edit and get things done. The thing I like about templates is that they the suggestions they're making are not necessarily the, the way that I would go with an edit typically. Here's a photo from Prague. This was a uh, early, early, super early morning on the Charles Bridge. And uh, that's why the streets are empty. This was blue hour just before sunrise. And um, this is a photo I've edited, edited probably three, four, five different ways over the years. And usually I'll just take an edit and then I, I share it on Flickr. I'm the kind of photographer who likes to do that. I like to go back to photos I've previously edited and edit them a different way. I've, I've come up with new ideas. I'm using different products. I've got better skills, things like that as time progresses. And so it's fun to do that. Also, it's just a fun creative experiment for me. So anyway, what I'm going to do in this video based on a template is not what I would historically do if I just went straight to the edit tab. And that's what I like about templates. They are often leading me down a direction that I wouldn't think to go myself. And yet I like the result. So I'm going to click on templates. The AI is going to come up here and say for this photo, that's the AI. So you've got these different categories down here. And this video is not about every category and that sort of thing. The suggestions here are uh, big screen and blockbuster. And I think one more, yeah, urban style. But I clicked on big screen and I came in and I clicked on travelog. And you can see it's a fairly desaturated look. And that's why I'm saying it's leading me in directions that I wouldn't go myself. Because if you've seen my videos, you know I like colors. And there's a lot of color in this image because it's blue hour, there's street lights on, and those buildings are just really colorful. However, when I clicked on this just to check it out, I thought, God, that's really cool looking. I could have a lot of fun with that. And so that's what I'm gonna do. So I chose that template. And then um, what you can do is you don't have to accept the template as is. That's not something that I would typically do. You're certainly able to, if, if you're happy with that, you can just go straight to export. But me being the kind of guy that likes, likes to move sliders around and kind of tinker with the image, I'm gonna go straight to edit and make some further adjustments. So if you aren't familiar with this, if you look on the right-hand side, these are the various tools. There's four tabs, there's various tools. The tools that have this little dot next to them, like Enhance AI, Color, Details, and Denoise, and then the tabs that have the dots on them, which would also be Pro. You can see Color Harmony and Super Contrast. Those are the tools that have been used to get me to this look. Now, if you look at the base photo, there it is, blue hour, lots of color, something that I would typically amp up, but this desaturated look is kind of working for me. I think it's cool. So I'm going to come in and have a little bit of a play with it. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and change the aspect ratio. I like 16 by 9. I don't know how well it works for this photo, but I'm cutting out some of the top of the photo. But I want to make sure I get that bottom left corner where that column lands. And I want to make sure I keep the top of that building there. So I'm going to hit enter and accept that change in Composition AI. So I've kind of tightened the crop. I brought it a little bit more forward. Obviously, it's a straight shot down the street, but here's where I'm just kind of having a play. And I, I'm going to be honest, I don't really have a real plan with this photo. I'm going to do some things that I would typically do. I'm going to start in light. I am going to go a little bit bluer. I want to add a little bit of contrast. I'm going to pull down the highlights and up the shadows. These are typical moves that I would make in a photo. I think Enhance AI, which has already been used, is going to I think need to be used a little bit more. Structure, I might add a little bit of that in the street and some of these buildings. So I'm gonna use the paint mask. That's already in play. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size of my brush. And I'm just gonna brush that in lightly in some of these areas. And if you notice, I'm not covering the whole image. I don't wanna overdo the structure and really just crank it up all over the image. I just kinda of wanna do the center part that your eye is drawn down. And you can always hit the forward slash key if you want to see where the mask is. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and move on. Now color, you can see, has been used. I want to check this out. Okay, it makes sense. Saturation is down. Vibrance is up. I'm going to add a little bit more vibrance and a little bit more saturation. I do like my colors. I like this desaturated look, but I want something a little bit more saturated than it has. 
I'm gonna skip details and denoise. I'm gonna go over here to landscape and I'm gonna pop golden hour a little bit because that's gonna bring those warm tones that are already there, especially in those lights, a little bit more into, uh, into play here. So I'm gonna pull that up. I'm gonna go about mid 30s. It's also hitting that wall over there. So let me turn that off and there's before golden hour and there's after. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna pop over to creative and I'm gonna take a look at mood. Mood is basically the replacement for LUTs. And LUTs, if you don't know, stands for lookup tables, but basically it can add or subtract, I guess, um, a significant amount of color to your image. And again, I like the desaturated look, but I'm gonna go through here and see if any of these LUTs look good for amping up the colors just a little bit. Again, I like the idea of the desaturated, but I'm a big color guy at heart, so it's kinda hard to uh, just kinda walk away from color completely. Okay, and oddly enough, down here at the bottom, there's a portrait toning section. You can see how it's kinda broken up here in LUTs, but I like this Athena portrait toning. And so even though it says portrait toning, it doesn't matter, you can stick it on any photo. I think it looks really good here. Let me turn this off and show you the before. There it is, a little bit more blue and kind of washed out. And there with the Athena LUT applied, it's popping some of those warmer tones a little bit. It's still fairly desaturated, but some of the pinks and the warm tones have come up and I like how that looks. I think it's really cool looking how it's dropping some of that pink look onto the cobblestones here on the sidewalk. So I'm pretty happy with that and time to move on. Okay, a quick stop in split toning, which is a great way to adjust colors. And I'm gonna leave the highlights alone. I'm fine with them. The shadows, I wanna move up a little bit. I'm gonna put them in kind of the blue realm. So that's usually around 230 or so. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit. It's really pretty insignificant, but if you look at the before, there it is before and after. Now if I, the saturation amount is really low. Again, I'm not trying to completely reverse the unsaturated look. I could add a whole lot of blue if I wanted to in the shadows, I don't want to. It's really just a minor touch and I think I was at about 12. I'm gonna leave that. And my last stop is over here to Mystical, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of that, simply because I think it creates a little bit of mood. There is a mood tool up here, which we used already for a LUT, but Mystical, I think it just adds a little bit of that dramatic, kind of romantic mood, adds back a little bit of contrast and shadow. So if I turn that off, there it is before, which I like quite a bit, to be honest. And after, a little bit of shadow, softens up the light a little bit, makes it a little bit more romantic. And that's really it for this one. I wouldn't do a whole lot more. I really like it. I mean, I think we were able to bring up some of the colors without really overdoing it in a lot of areas. I think I really popped the warm tones and I liked how the LUT really brought up some of those warm tones and also the pinks like over here in that building and some of these buildings down here. And it also, I think, helped with the reflections of the light falling on the cobblestone sidewalks. So if you go look at my before photo, you can see very blue and you can see it's, it's, it's frankly a photo that is ripe for some set saturation work, but this is a much more subdued, uh, unsaturated look with a little bit of pop of color. And if I do the sliding window, you can see such a difference in the photo. And again, not the typical edit that I would do because I tend to go more for the saturating look and kind of the bold colors, but I really like this a little bit more washed out look. To me, it's a little bit more moody and a little bit more interesting. And the only reason I got here is because I used a template. And so again, that's one of the fun things I'm exploring with templates is going down creative streets or avenues or paths that I would never really get to on my own because I don't mentally or artistically, maybe is a better word, I don't artistically err in that direction, but I really like it. I think it's cool looking. So that's an example of how you can use templates to kind of go on a creative path you may not have come to on your own. It's a great way for to do some discovery and some experimentation and more than anything, it's just fun. And that's one of the things I'm loving about Luminar AI. So hope this gives you some ideas. I know you're gonna have it in your hands really soon. The uh, early bird pre-orders get it on December 10th. Everybody else gets it December 15th. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you really soon with another video. You guys take care of yourselves and adios.